Hi guys, it's Daniel here, and today we're going to solve this little problem. Find 2 to the power of 20, plus 3 to the power of 30, plus 4 to the power of 40, plus 5 to the power of 50, plus 6 to the power of 60, mod 7. To solve, first you can try to solve this by yourself. Ready? So, to solve this problem, we will use a little theorem, literally a little theorem, called Fermat's Little Theorem. This states that a to the power of p is congruent to a mod p when p is a prime and a is, is relatively prime to p. So, for example, 3 to the power of 11 is congruent to 3 mod 11. Now, this theorem also implies that a to the power of p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p because, well, because you're basically just dividing by a on both sides. So, we're going to use this version of Fermat's little theorem to solve this problem. So, we can see that we are taking this thing mod 7. So, a good choice for p is p equals 7. This, when we do that, we can see that a to the power of 6 is congruent to 1 mod p, where p is equal to 7, so 1 mod 7. This should be over here. Whoops. So, let's first look at the first part, 2 to the power of 20. In this part, we see that 2 to the power of 6 is congruent to 1 mod 7 from our lemma here. So that means 2 to the power of 18 is congruent to 1 mod 7. Therefore, 2 to the power of 20 is congruent to congruent to well, 2 to the power of 18 is 1 mod 7, to, so 2 to the power of 20 is 4 times 2 to the power of 18, which is 4 mod 7. Now, let's look at the next one. 3 to the power of 30. We see that 3 to the power of 6 is 1 mod 7. So 3 to the power of 30 is congruent to, well, well 3 to the power of 30 is congruent to 3 to the power of... 6, we all that to the power of 5, which is congruent to 1 to the power of 5, which is congruent to 1 mod 7. Now, let's look at 4. 4 to the power of 40 is congruent to 4 to the power of 6 times, let's see, how many sixes can we fit in 40? We can fit six of them. And that times 4 to the power of 30, 6 times 6 36, 40 minus 36 is 4, which is congruent to 4 to the power of 4 mod 7. And by evaluating 4 to the power of 4 or whatever, it's like 16 times 16 equals 256. And when you divide 256 by 7, we get, let's see, 21 minus 210 is 46 minus uh, 42 is 4. So this is congruent to 4 mod 7. Hopefully I did that correctly. Now let's see, 5 to the power of 50. This is congruent to 5 to the power of 6. How many 6s can fit in 50? We can fit in 8 6s. To the power of 8 times how many are left over? There are 2 left over, 5 squared, which is congruent to 25 mod 7 which is congruent to, well, 25 minus 21 is 4, mod 7. 
And finally, 6 per 60. We could go on like the rest of them, except for here's a little neat trick. 6 is congruent to negative 117. So we can do negative 160, which is just congruent to 1 mod 7. Now, we have all these things. We have 2 to the power of 20 is 4 mod 7. 3 to the power of 30 is 1 mod 7. 4 to the power of 40 is 4 mod 7. 5 to the power of 50 is 4 mod 7. And 6 to the power of 60 is 1 mod 7. So, now we have all these mod 7. 4, 1, 4, 4, and 1. We can simply just add them all together to find the total mod 7. So I have 4 plus 1 plus 4 plus 4 plus 1 is equal to, combine the 4s, 12, combine the 1s, 2. So 12 plus 2 is equal to 14, which is congruent to 0 mod 7. And we are done. Hi guys, Zong here, back with another math video. Today we're gonna use a, a rule that we did in a recent that we used in a recent mass points video. Uh, uh, some of you may not have uh, very grasped, so I'm gonna prove it. And the rule is called Stewart's theorem. Oh man, it's a laggy day today. Okay, so Stewart's theorem. Uh, see the triangle to your right. Yeah, Stewart's theorem basically states that. Uh, so um, I'm gonna go with the easier version because the easier version is easy to understand. So d a d plus m 